Hey guys, I won the lottery. No, not the lottery where you get a lot of money. I won the catalytic converter lottery. I bought the cheapest catalytic converter known to man for $31.60. And I'm even gonna demonstrate how these work. So here it is guys, the magical contraption known as a catalytic converter. Some people refer to these as cats. So imagine the catalytic converter is basically a big air filter that purifies the air as it goes from here to this side. And the air that comes out of this side will be less harmful than the air that went in over here. And it does this through the catalyst. And now let's do a quick inspection of my piece of budget catalytic converter. And if we look through the inlet pipe, we have the substrate. And the substrate is that honeycomb design. And normally on that honeycomb design, you're gonna have all those precious metals and the reason why people actually steal these. And if you're guessing that there is no precious metals in here, I'm thinking you're right. So these sort of catalytic converters are oftentimes referred to as 90 day catalytic converters. And they may even keep your check engine light off longer as the real magic on why these aftermarket catalytic converters work comes down to the oxygen sensor hole. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. So we have the substrate, we have the shell, and the shell is actually what keeps the catalyst intact and protected from the exhaust system's harsh environment. So this acts like a skeleton. Then we have the oxygen sensor hole, and the oxygen sensor hole is just like it sounds, the hole where the oxygen sensor is gonna go and fit into. The real magic of these aftermarket catalytic converters is this particular hole. When this hole is protruding out a little bit like this, it'll keep the oxygen sensor a little bit out of the way of the exhaust and less likely to throw off a check engine light as you might get a P420 code for a low decrease in deficiency. So for example, your catalytic converter might only decrease by 4% and you're gonna have a catalyst deficiency code. Well, that's what that little tiny adjustment in this hole will do. It'll go ahead and make it less likely that that check engine light will turn on. And the same idea is behind a spark plug non-fouler. What this is is basically a little spacer that will go ahead and keep this back a little further and allow the sensor to sample less air and it'll keep that check engine light off. And they have little mini catalysts. And I'll leave you guys a couple of videos down below on these. These are pretty remarkable and they do work. So if you actually have an intact catalytic converter and you're gonna be using your vehicle for off-road purposes and you're tired of seeing that check engine light on because the vehicle's detecting that the catalyst is bad, this is magic right here. And it works. It's right in there. And it did come with the included hardware for the rear and also a gasket and the two spring bolts for the front. All of this was included, but obviously there's gonna be no precious metals in here. And the shells look intact. There's no holes. Not bad. Now that we have seen the quality, should you buy one of these budget-friendly catalytic converters? Well, for some people, this actually might be the cure that they're looking for. Let's just say you have a catalytic converter that is clogged because the honeycomb in here is all melted up or it's turned sideways and it's actually clogged up the exhaust system. If you put a catalytic converter like this in, this is gonna allow free flow again and maybe it'll go ahead and work for one, two, three, or 20 years. And if you live in a state that doesn't test for emissions, you're gonna be just fine with this. A lot of these super budget friendly catalytic converters are not EPA and carb compliant. So you are gonna have to use these on off-road conditions. Hey dad, do you think you can use my car engine for the video? So my son built this little motor here out of a kit. And I'm gonna use it to demonstrate how your vehicle determines that this catalytic converter is not performing well anymore. So your engine is like a big old air pump. 
It takes oxygen rich, unpolluted air in and combines it with fuel and gives it a spark. And that spark creates a lot of energy. And long story short, that energy is then used to go and propel your wheels so you can move your car. Well, for this cycle to continue, the vehicle now needs to go and get rid of that air. So it's gonna get rid of the air through the exhaust. Before the exhaust makes it to the catalytic converter, there's an oxygen sensor. This oxygen sensor right here is called the upstream oxygen sensor or the pre-cat oxygen sensor. And there's another oxygen sensor after the catalytic converter. And this is called the post-cat oxygen sensor or downstream oxygen sensor. And as the vehicle is running, this oxygen sensor in the front closest to the engine is gonna go and monitor the exhaust. And it's gonna see some conditions and this is known as fuel trim. So it's gonna be rich, lean, rich, lean. Rich means it's high in fuel and there's a lot of unburned gases and lean means that there's very few unburned gases and there's not a lot of fuel in that gas feed going out. And now the vehicle will go and monitor the readings from this post-cat oxygen sensor. Ideally, you wanna have a rich lean, rich lean condition up here and the rear oxygen sensor should be steady. So this would be going like this and then the back one would barely move. And that's how the vehicle determines that your catalytic converter is working correctly. And by keeping the oxygen sensor a little bit out of the way, these aftermarket catalytic converters do a good job of keeping your check engine light off. Even though this is not performing well, that is how they work. But the one thing that the vehicle cannot account for is if there's any sort of leaks. So if you have any sort of exhaust leaks, it will go ahead and give you all sorts of bad information and you might be chasing a bad catalyst when you really have an exhaust leak. So you can test for exhaust leaks very easily by grabbing some soapy water and spray it on the exhaust and you can locate an exhaust leak pretty easily. And a lot of times you will find exhaust leaks near the flex pipes. And if you find an exhaust leak towards the other end, let's just say past the downstream oxygen sensor, you really don't need to worry about it as much because 99% of the times, nothing is monitored past the downstream oxygen sensor unless you have some sort of exotic vehicle that has an active exhaust system. So you wanna investigate from the downstream oxygen sensor all the way back to the engine block. Now I gotta tell you guys, putting in one of these catalytic converters can be very, very simple or it could be very, very complicated. It really depends on the vehicle. But you'll notice that the vehicles that oftentimes have their catalytic converters stolen are the ones that they're very easy to go ahead and swap out. So if it's easy to steal, then it's probably gonna be very easy to install and you're gonna be able to find it on the open market. Now you're not really supposed to buy used catalytic converters. In fact, they're supposed to go and make these interoperable by drilling a hole down the center of each one of those shells and making this useless. And honestly, unless your catalytic converter is stolen, I don't think you need to necessarily replace it. As with my own experience of running car dealerships for about 16 years, I've only replaced one catalytic converter. And that was on a 2004 Nissan Murano. And that vehicle had been driven for many years with a random misfire on cylinder number one. So I had to replace a catalyst on that one vehicle and one vehicle only. So I have a whole playlist on rescuing your catalytic converter and a lot of the fixes are free. I have tried some products and there are some products that work. and I've tested these. So before you throw your money down the drain, check out those videos. And from working around vehicles since I was 13 years old, I have figured out this secret and it's this guys. Whenever your vehicle has a problem, it's most likely because it has more than one problem. So if your catalytic converter is actually bad, it's most likely because there's something going on with the vehicle. So if you're looking for a permanent fix, don't forget to fix the issue that actually caused the catalytic converter to go out. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask and I'll point you guys in the right direction and I'll leave you guys this playlist for the catalytic converter readiness for smog in the video box down below. Make it a great day.